we'll be here as early as 4.15, 4.30 in the morning. Because it's a schedule that most people just aren't used to, you know, but you, and you do it for over a year. For me, it's been a year and a half. It's just, it's almost second nature. This is the job, you know, get to come here and go to work, give out guns. I have to be here. My weapon needs to go out. My Marines need their weapons to go. Uh, rifle qual, pistol qual. Maybe guys are going out somewhere. Maybe they have some kind of deployment going on. Maybe they have some exercise that needs their weapon, you know? I need to be here, because why? That's mission accomplishment. That's our first job as Marines. I need to make sure we're ready at all times. 100% ready to go, ready for the fight. That's what we're here for, this is what we do. Overall purpose is to basically lift, in general, just infantry and anyone else from ship to shore. That is our main job. Our main mission is to bring Marines on board, uh, on a plan for assaults and raids, uh, all the way up to 20 miles inland. Uh, we're known to do more than 20 miles, like in uh, Iraq, we did a lot of stuff over there. But our actual mission is to bring Marines to the shore, up to 20 miles, supporting them the whole way. Uh, in a desert-like environment, you got a lot of big problem with the heat. There's a lot of heat casualties because it is a metal vehicle, and so uh, you got to be really careful about that. Tactically, we got to really control our dust signatures. That's kind of hard to do, but you can see a vehicle like this a lot farther away because of its dust signature in the desert. And uh, there's a lot of soft sand, so you have to be really careful about getting getting it built up in places. Uh, you can throw track really easily. On our last deployment, we actually did a lot of that with the infantry. They basically came aboard our vehicles. We asked them, hey, what do you want to learn? Uh, we taught them about our comm systems because it's different than theirs. Uh, we taught them a lot about the turret because, you know, if something was to actually happen, you know, if like all the crew, crew needed to go down and we had to have a driver up there, you know, what if, what if we had to have an infantry drive so the one tracker that was left could still operate the turret? Or what if uh, everybody went down and the for some reason, infantry had to take control of the track. They could still maneuver it. So we try and teach them a lot. Um, and you know, every Marine are riflemen, so we try and do everything we can to learn their job um, and the effectiveness of their weapons so we know how close or how far we can drop them. Like for mortars, for example, um, knowing the range of a mortar knows that we, we can put them in range of the target that they got hit so they don't have to move forward or we don't have to move back. Um, so it's really good to know their weapons and their capabilities so we can help support them like we're supposed to. They got two charge three! Fire. Wow. Oh, I love operating the most. Driving around's fun. Uh, it's not every day you get to drive around a 26-ton vehicle or just be operating one in general. I uh, love shooting the weapons a lot. Not really the stuff that goes with it, but I really enjoy using the 50 and the 40. Um, I love all the tactics that we have involved, the, the fact that we're a combat MOS, and that we, uh, we're literally what makes the Marine Corps the Marine Corps. Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni's Headquarters and Headquarters Squadron Sergeant Major's right-hand man is a squadron gunnery sergeant, Gunnery Sergeant Nicholas Stewart. From leading and mentoring Marines to logistically planning events, the life of a squadron guns isn't an easy one. I think it's uh, very important. You know, I think it's the glue that holds it all together. Without a squadron gunny, most of the Marines and sailors here and civilians would probably pretty much be lost because uh, the squadron gunner is the one that ensures everything's happening. Pretty much behind the scene guy, ensure that the mission is completed. Gunnery Sergeant Stewart's first impression upon his Marines was big. Like, he's just a big guy, you know. Um, so I was intimidated in the sense that I didn't think I could go and be like, Marine Gunnery Sergeant and not get yelled at. But that was before I even heard him speak. Yeah. After meeting and working with the squadron guns, the Marines and civilian co-workers describe Gunnery Sergeant Stewart a bit differently. He's hardworking, very hardworking, very dependable, and very loyal. Too. I have to say, motivating, loud, and goofy. He is, he's well-loved, and I think that, that speaks a lot about the character and quality of the Marine that he is. With a family at home, Gunnery Sergeant Stewart masters the fine line of balancing his personal and professional lives. It's hard. It's very hard. But I learned some, uh, some I had some tools put in my toolbox when I was a drill instructor because that's pretty much the same. You know, there's not enough time in a day, but you just have to make it. You have to make, make time for, for everything, your family and also your Marines and sailors. And uh, I don't know how I do it, but 
I'm tasked with doing it, so I ensure that I do it.